Hi, this is Lija here. Today we are dealing with the digestive system in detail. The digestive system consists of alimentary canal and associated digestive glands. The alimentary canal is a straight and complete tube extending from mouth to anus and it is lined throughout by ciliated epithelium and its diameter varies in different parts. First part is the mouth. It is a large oval median aperture situated anteriorventrally below the rostrum. It is bordered by a frill-like membrane called the oral hood. The oral hood is formed by the dorsal and lateral projections of the anterior end of the trunk. Free ventrolateral edge or margin of the oral hood is beset with 10 to 11 pairs of stiff, slender and ciliated oral or buccal cirrhi which bear sensory uh, papillae. Their number increases with age and the buccal cirrhi and the edge of the oral hood are internally supported by stiff gelatinous skeletal rods. The buccal cirrhi form a sieve or filter to prevent the entry of larger particles with food and current. The oral hood encloses a large funnel shaped cavity called buccal cavity or vestibule into which opens the mouth. As this cavity is lined with ectoderm, it is regarded as stomodium and its external opening is considered as the true mouth. Basically, the epithelial lining of oral hood forms 6 to 8 pairs of finger-like folds or patches, each formed by a ciliated ridge. Collectively, these form a wheel organ or rotatory organ or Muller's organ. The cilia of wheel organ set up a whirling water current to seep food organisms into mouth. And the mid-dorsal groove of the wheel organ is the largest, which ends in a small depression on the roof of buccal cavity. These are named hatchet's groove and hatchet's split respectively. Both are ciliated, glandular and secrete mucus, while the pit is also considered as a sense organ. Posteriorly, the vestibule is closed by a circular ring-like vertical membrane called velum and it is perforated by a central circular aperture called endrostome leading into the pharynx. Endrostome is sometimes mistakenly called as mouth but it does not correspond to the mouth of other chordates because it opens into the pharynx lined with endoderm. The true mouth always opens into the stomodium lined with ectoderm. The velum is provided with a spinger to open or close the endostome and the posterior border of the velum is produced into 10 or 12 slender ciliated sensory velar tentacles. They also serve to stain the water current entering to the endostome. Next is the pharynx. The pharynx in Amphioxus is mainly an organ of feeding. It is a very species and laterally compressed sac forming the largest part of the alimentary canal. It remains suspended in the atria cavity which surrounds it in on all sides except the dorsal. The wall of the pharynx is perforated by numerous gill slits and these gill slits are separated from each other by gill bars. The gill bars are of two types, primary gill bars and secondary gill bars which regularly alternate with each other. All the gill bars are strengthened by a skeletal rod. They, and they are the forerunners of the visceral skeleton of higher vertebrates. Extending midventrally along the entire floor of the pharynx is a shallow groove called endostyle. The endostyle is lined with four longitudinal tracts of ciliated cells. Alternating with the ciliated tracts are intervening zones of mucus secreting glandular cells. Their mucus secretion is used for feeding. According to Barrington, the endostyle is a precursor of thyroid gland because like the thyroid gland of craniates, the endostyle concentrates iodine in itself. Next is the esophagus. It is a short narrow ciliated tube and leads to the intestine. The intestine of branchiostoma is a narrow uncoiled tube. It is differentiated into two parts, anterior wide midcut and posterior hindcut. The midcut has a lateral ciliated tract on its right side. Its cilia beat 
downward directing the food into the midcut diverticulum. The ciliary action serves to rotate the foot or churn the foot and the hindgut has a dorsal ciliated tract. Its terminal part or rectum is heavily ciliated and opens out by anus. The anus is a small circular aperture controlled by the sphincters. It opens at the base of the caudal fin on the ventral side, a little on the left side of the median line. Next is the digestive glands. Pitcut diverticulum is the main digestive gland and it arises as a blind pouch from the ventral side between the esophagus and the midgut and extends forward through the atrial cavity along the right side of the pharynx. Its inner lining has ciliated grooves for movement of food. The secretion of midgut diverticulum contains digestive enzymes like amylase, lipase and protease. The midgut diverticulum is also called liver or hepatic cecum but it does not resemble a liver in structure or function. Besides, the epithelial lining of intestine also contains numerous gland cells that secrete digestive enzymes. Next is the feeding mechanism. Food particles are filtered from the current of water entering the pharynx through the mouth and finally going out through a tube. The rotatory movements of cilia or wheel organ cause a whirling current of water into the mouth. The buccal cirrhae fringing the oral hood turn inwards to form a fine mesh or sieve that prevents the entry of larger foot and sand particles. While passing through the endostome, the water current is further filtered by the velar tentacles so that only very fine foot particles enter the pharynx. The chemoreceptors present on buccal cirrhae and velar tentacles properly serve to test the nature of water current and foot particles. Foot particles that escape the main current are caught and concentrated by mucus secreted by Hatch's group and pit in the oral hood. These foot particles are pushed through the endrostome into the pharynx by the whirling action of wheel organ and join the main current. The flow of water into the pharynx is controlled by wheeler. Periodically, the atrial pore closes and the transverse muscles of the atrial floor undergo sudden contraction. This sets up a reversal of water current or rejection current ejecting out forcefully through the endrostome and mouth. As a result, the velar tentacles and buccal cirrhae are able to shed off larger foot and sand particles accumulated on them. Pharynx plays the most important part in foot collection. The outward beating of lateral cilia or gill pass and atria cilia on their outer surface drive the water current through the gill slits into the atrium and finally passing through the atrial pore. This also facilitates the inflow of fresh water current through the mouth. Inside pharynx, the foot particles get entrapped in mucus secreted by the glandular tracts of endostyle and by pharyngeal epithelium. The cilia of epipharyngeal group beat backwards moving the foot ladder mucus into the esophagus in the form of a narrow foot cord or foot cylinder. The foot cord from the pharynx passes through esophagus into midcut. By lateral tract of cilia it is directed into the midcut diverticulum and driven again to midcut by ciliary action. Digestion starts in the midcut and continues in the remaining part of intestine. Digestion is mainly extracellular, but intracellular digestion also takes place, uh, which is unique as it is unknown in other vertebrates. Intracellular digestion takes place mainly in the phagocytic cells of midcut diverticulum. The digestive enzymes of branchiostoma, according to Barrington, are amylase, lipase and protease. Pepsin are absent in digestive enzymes unlike other vertebrates. The digestive food is absorbed partly in midgut but mostly in hindgut and the undigested food material is finally thrown out to anus. This is all about the digestive system of branchiostoma. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please share and subscribe.